Hi everyone. In this session, we are going to look into the materials of machine design. Different material, it will have different material properties like this um, T-slot bar. It is made of aluminium. It's quite hard, not easy to deform using manual effort, but maybe under extreme load, it may deform depending on the material properties. This is an acrylic material. Okay. It's a plastic-based material. I can actually crack it much more easily than the aluminium bar, but I don't want to do that. I want to keep my material intact at the time being. And this is a plastic tube. Okay, It feels very rubbery. You can deform it. It has a very high plasticity limit. So different materials it will show different behavior. The question now is, why do we need to study about materials in machine design? Specific requirements and the function of the machine that you are designing depends on the material. Remember the speed reduce example, it depends on the material. Some machine element requires the material to have high strength, like the gear system. If the gear breaks, they lose one of their teeth, then the performance of the machine will be affected. It will not be as effective as we want it to be. Other machine elements like the belting system in the engine uh, requires a more flexible material, not too rigid and it has a certain limit of deformation range. So differences of material behavior is important in the consideration for the machine design. And these differences can be measured using the stress drain diagram. The stress strain diagram is a measure of the material behavior when it is subjected to tensile load. A machine called Universal Tensile Test Machine will measure the stress value of the material when it is being stretched as shown in this animation. Stress value is the corresponding force of the material over the area, while the strain value is the measure of material displacement. Okay, so this is basic physics. Okay. Now, this is a common region of the stress strain diagram. The stress value would be on the y axis, yang tegak tu, while the strain value would be on the x axis, yang melintang tu. Okay? At certain point of displacement, the material would show an elastic behavior. The elastic behavior is illustrated in a straight line. Dia tak ada bengkok-bengkok, straight je. Within this region, katalah you remove the tensile load, the material will return to its original state. Contohnya macam getah. Kalau you main-main getah tu kan, under lower tensile load, it will return to its original state if you remove the loading. So that is an example of an elastic behavior. So back to our stress strain diagram, as you stretch the material further, beyond its elastic limit, the material would begin to yield meaning that the material structure begin to change. Dia dah tak elastic lagi, okay? Further displacement of the material will result to strain hardening, meaning that the stress value may increase but non-linearly. Dia dah mula bengkok-bengkok tu, okay? Unlike the elastic region yang tegak tu. So, what happened here is that if you stretch the material beyond its yield point and then if you remove the load, the material will not return to its original state. Again, kalau saya guna contoh getah tu, kalau you stretch it further beyond its yield point, at one point, it doesn't fracture yet, but it will not return to its original state. Dia dah mula regang. So, that is the strain hardening region or sometimes you call it the plasticity region. Okay? And then, at certain point of displacement, the material will have its ultimate strength, maximum strength. It is the maximum stress value that the material can sustain. So, over that limit, material cannot hold it anymore and it will begin to fracture. Ataupun, broken lah. Some ductile material will exhibit necking before fracture, while some brittle material will just immediately fracture. For example, macam ceramic or tiles, that's example of brittle material. Okay, remember, within the elastic region, line dia straight je kan? Okay, let's just wipe out the remaining region so that we don't get confused with this calculation. 
we can use a simple straight line equation to measure the value of material properties. Do you still remember the basic line equation? you remember how to calculate the slope of a straight line? Kecerunan? Slope or M is equal to the Y range divided with the X range. So, I'm just recalling the basic upper high school punya formula. Okay, the Y range... If you look into our graph, it's actually our stress value, while the X range is our strain value. So, we can use this relationship to measure the elasticity of the material. Elasticity or E is equal to stress, which is the Y value, divided with the strain, which is the X value. Sometimes we call this value as modulus of elasticity. Sometimes we call it Young's modulus. Okay, simple kan? But please remember, this relationship of elasticity is only valid within the elastic region. Bila dia dah go to the strain hardening region, ah, dia tak boleh pakai this equation anymore because the line is not straight. Now, here's an example of the stress strain diagram of different type of material. You can see that the pattern is quite different. If you look at the brittle material, it have a very minimal elastic region and it almost doesn't have any strain hardening or plasticity region. This diagram shows that brittle material will fracture at low displacement without undergoing the plasticity region. The second type of material is strong, but it's not ductile. It can be displaced more compared to the brittle material because the strain limit is higher. Nampak tak dia punya strain tu lagi besar daripada brittle material. It has some yield point and again, it doesn't undergo plasticity behavior. The third type of material is a ductile material. It can be stretched more compared to the brittle and strong material, although the stress limit is lower. Beyond the yield point, it may undergo some strain hardening behavior and some necking before it fracture. Nampak line yang bengkang-bengkok tu, that's the plasticity region. Okay, metals are a common type of ductile material. For example, copper, aluminium and steel. These materials are very common in most machine elements because it does not easily fracture at low displacement, meaning it have higher strain limit. Lah. When it have higher strain limit, then it will not be easily fractured. Okay, finally, the plastic material, it have a very low elastic limit while it have a more plasticity ability as shown. Okay, now let's look at this example. Given two types of ductile material, which is aluminium and steel, the Young's modulus, the yield stress, the ultimate tensile stress, the fracture stress, and the fracture strain are all given in this table. Can you plot the stress strain diagram for both material? Of course, you can plot it. If we plot the stress strain diagram using the formula that have been shown earlier, it will look something like this. This is the yield stress point. This is the ultimate tensile strength and this is the fracture point. Okay, now based on the data given, in your opinion, which material is more elastic? Think about it. Okay, You can decide of material elasticity based on the Young's modulus value. High Young's modulus means the slope of the elastic line is higher, which means that the material is quite stiff and it can change its shape only very slightly on the elastic load. Dia tak begitu elastic. Okay? So, from this data, aluminium, which have lower Young's modulus of 72 gigapascal, is more elastic lah compared to steel because it is less stiff. Okay. Now, the second question. Which material will fracture first at 0.2 strain value? Okay, as you can see, Aluminium will fracture at 0 0.5, sorry, 0 0.15 strain while steel fractures at the value of 0 0.23. Based from this data, it is quite clear that aluminium will fracture first while steel will experience necking and it does not fracture yet. Okay, theoretically lah. Now, the third question. Okay, very important. This is going to be the question that you need to answer in you learn as part of your attendance in this lecture series. Okay, you need to select the material 
for a gear housing which can sustain a stress value of 100 megapascal. So, in your opinion, which material is more suitable? Hmm, is it aluminium? Is it steel? Okay, think about it very carefully and submit your answer in Euler. Okay class, you are highly recommended to read through the given PDF lecture materials in ULEARN for more details of different type of material measures and various types of materials and its manufacturing processes. Okay, that is all for now. In the next lecture series, we will be looking into the more interesting part of machine design which is the stress and deformation analysis. So, some mathematical equation is going to happen in the next video. Don't get stressed out. Anyway, get ready and see you later alligator.